regards. Positive hey. um, It's finally here, you know, Matrik, uh, Island. Um, I don't think you know, there will ever be another rivalry like we have with the All Blacks, but uh, this is shaping up to be quite a one. Um, how's the feeling? Yeah, the feeling is like when you play the All Blacks and uh, when you play uh, big teams. I, I think the rivalry is more from the media side uh, as well now. So I think sometimes uh, maybe they don't 100% understand our South African sense of humor while we try to find something funny in, in anything, even when, when it's going bad. Um, and sometimes get quoted out of um, uh, context. So I just take the Simon Zebo as an example. I mean, the guy phoned me and, and, and he says he was in the podcast, in the whole podcast, having a few beers and, and he made the crack and he, and he, and he, and he said that. Um, and, and he said this, uh, I don't know, I'm repeating myself, but, um, you know, just to take the last part of I say, uh, let's spice it up. Uh, that's also that that's South African humor saying it back to Simon. You know, so yes, uh, they're number two in the world. Uh, they've beaten us last time. Um, uh, we don't see ourselves as the underdogs. Uh, I don't think they see themselves as the underdogs. And I think we'll see two teams on Saturday really desperate to perform for their countries. Russell, in terms of selection, how difficult was it um, in two positions like plow and other positions? Yeah, it, difficult is almost uh, it's it's almost a bit of a privilege, you know, if you if you have guys uh, um, out like Jean Klein and uh, Lewitt and Ach Hanekom and there's so many youngsters that we also could have would have where the bulls could have went really deep that we could have selected Damien Willems and those kind of guys, um, but uh, yeah, I then. You go down and you see, okay, but uh, I think is that rugby structure is working in terms of bringing youngsters through. I just look at our 20 captain currently. I think he's probably one of the guys that can play in the next two, three years. Uh, and like, I know he's not, not a lot of loose head, but he's like an Oli Laruta type of player or Osturant who can come through very early. Uh, and I think Jan Enner Vessels should have been one of those as well. Um, yeah, so um, look, at the end of the day, they can only play 23. And and uh, Ireland is a country that's much smaller than us. Uh, although people like to compare 60 million to 4 million, uh, not all 60 million play rugby in South Africa, uh, and not all 60 million uh, fo follow rugby. You know, so. Uh, um, but the way we have depth currently is, is certainly showed us after all the injuries that we are on a healthy position. Uh, but that means absolutely nothing if, if it doesn't transfer onto the field. Um, Prasi, um, can I ask you, um, usually when you come to press conference, I've been fortunate where you've always reminded us that when the Springboks run out into the field, that they always go out to win test matches. Can I ask you as a coach and an experienced player like uh, even next to you, do you as a leader, do you ever use words like revenge, we've got a score to settle, or we've got unfinished business when you face teams, especially this team that you guys are facing? Please correct me, the last time you guys beat Ireland was back in 2016? Mm. Is that the type of language you would want to use on your side? Is there some unfinished business that you guys have got this weekend, just in the next series? No, we don't use those words. But do you think you guys have got um, some unfinished business? You are the two times back to back world champions. Is there something to prove against this island side? Uh, I think that they, they probably, from their side, have unfinished business, but try and get number one. You know, so uh, we don't talk like that. We analyze players, we. Uh, Chats on how they performed in, in URC and European Cup, and uh, we pick our teams accordingly to see what players we think can do the job for us, you know, uh, on, on Saturday. And we train really hard, and uh, yeah, we, we start, try to stay in our reality. And our reality is we're playing at home against a team that's beaten us. Uh, all the games were really close, uh, they deserved all of those games, uh, um, but it's never. Oh, we've got a score to settle. I mean, uh, I'd rather take a World Cup, um, two World Cups, and a Brazil Irish Lions series, in, and, and, and take the three losses. Uh, but we never go out to, to lose. We definitely didn't pick this team to, to try and lose. Um, Russell, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
yeah, we might sell this one or two niggles. We might on Thursday still, uh, there's a possibility for seven one as well, uh, but that uh, we'll give it time for Thursday, but I don't want to elaborate on that too much now at this point. Uh, but Sasha certainly brings something to the party where, you know, there's not a lot of changes when we go 6-2. You know, if, if you had to pick, uh, and that, that's actually where money uh, missed out. You know, of course, uh, if a 12 goes down, you can go straight to 12 because he's played 12 for the Stormers. If a 15 go down, he can go straight to 15. If a 10 go, just goes down, he can go straight to 10. Whereas with money, uh, again, I want to reiterate, um, uh, for him not making the 23, it's, it's just purely because we went 6 2. Uh, but uh, money is not so. Comfortable at at 12, Andre would go to 12, and then Manu to 10 or fullback. Then we'll have to move Cheslin back to fullback. Uh, everybody, everybody from 10 one out, and so that just makes more sense why Sasha, um, yes, can cover those three positions. And just, sorry, and just on the two locks on the bench, is that because of the opposition? No, it's just uh, Arche always brings a lot of energy for us off the bench. Someone is like Jan Hendrik Vestel, one of the players. Uh, you know, we rank the players since 2013, um, uh, what they must work on and, and what their potential and what their ceiling is. A guy like Salman has just been really unlucky uh, injury wise. He always, at very uh, crucial stages, just before tournaments, uh, got some bad injuries. Uh, he's really showing his, his willingness. Uh, and his physicality in, in, in training sessions and, and in a few minutes or 20 or 25 minutes, even would know how many minutes? Against Wales. Yeah, well, so I mean, probably 20. Yeah, 20, 20, 20, 20, 21 minutes against Wales when even was up. Uh, and he, he did, had some solid performances there. So, yeah, uh, in that, that sense, it's nice for front row to have two fresh locks behind them somewhere in the game. Oh, just. Um Carrying on with the bench, I mean, you, you've got tremendous loose forward riches, um, and obviously your your starting loose chair is quite a settled combination. But uh, to go with Marco from start and a, a real specialist on the side on the bench, does that point to the breakdowns being really crucial on on Saturday and a, and a potential strength of Ireland? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, we didn't, but, but that's not why we picked him. I think Marco brings impact in all the areas, in carrying the ball, in defence, in, in slowing the ball down, in mauling, in scrumming. Uh, uh, he's definitely somebody that you can have on the bench. Uh, he can play eight as well. Uh, he's somebody who, who comes on and don't just sort out one department who might not be firing or doing as well as we wanted to at that specific moment. So uh, I'll say he's more all around that we've uh, since uh, I can't remember when last we played with an open and blind side, even when I and other under defender played, we played left and right. Uh, but you're right, he, he's, he's a great uh, poacher of the ball, and hopefully he can get us a few. But uh, the Irish got tremendous loose forwards. Can I, can I? Um, Rassi, there's two key positions. There's team and eight. You've got Waka and eight, you've got Kiss at 13. I mean, Lukaku has come back from injury. How tricky was the decision to go with JC and Quark, especially with how well Yevan was pushed on the season? No, it wasn't tricky. I think JC is in top form. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anybody that can say JC is not in an in outstanding form in the World Cup he was, uh, in the last World Test match he was. Um, uh, Look, Anya hasn't played a lot of rugby uh, in the last four or five weeks. Um, you know, it's a different story of a guy like Malcolm for where we had him and we, could take, uh, we couldn't yet do the things with uh, Lukanyu uh, to make him match ready because uh, he's not 100% match ready. Uh, um, yeah, well, playing Irish level match ready. Uh, a guy like Malcolm, and that's why the last test match was so important, a guy like Malcolm, we could start there, we could give him 45 minutes you know, now we can come off the bench again, Bongi can go as long as he can, and Malcolm can hopefully have some impact. Uh, but when Lukanyu is on form, uh, Lukanyu is brilliant, and uh, it's just a matter of time before 
to can you start pushing Jesse the really hard again and, and then there's the young Ethan Hooker uh, who we thought is really fine, we think he's playing well and then also um, obviously who's a uh, Kainan who, who really did well at the team so um, Kainan, Kainan will also join us and be available for the second days. Uh, Kwakan Ivan, yeah, he, um, he, yeah. If you if you want to go six two, and you want to have Marco and Kwakan in the team, you know it would be lovely to have Kwakan and Marco on the bench and say go and have an impact. Uh, but then you must go seven one, uh, you know, or you must drop a lockout. Uh, and I, we don't feel uh, Salman deserved to get dropped out. Um, he's settling in as a nice front lock. Uh, he's learning a lot from guys from Ivan. Uh, uh, Ivan has now been with us for, for a while, he's got I think four or five test caps under his belt. Uh, all of the players out there understand what we're trying to do. We're trying to not kill guys' careers by throwing them into a squad of unknowns around them, but slowly and certainly uh, uh, give guys opportunity against uh, proper teams and then a bit tougher and then a bit tougher and then give you a rest again. And then maybe are you now a proper test player? And I guess Ivan showed as he is, and he will get his chance again. I think um, in terms of the bench as well, uh, I see you tell us Jenna Kamp is in. Um, also, we also have a player like Thomas Dutoy, who will probably be fighting for a position uh, in those props on the bench. You can tell me the signs that a fantastic season in England has become a try scoring machine. Can you just take us through what was the thinking between both of those two players? Was it ever a toss-up between the two to see who gets the number 17 gender? Uh, that one is uh, unfortunately just logistics. A guy like Mr. Reinach had two training sessions with us just because when Montpellier released him. And I mean, he, he's a guy that can easily make the match at 23. Uh, just Krapis Krupp, hey, was the whole time with us, first, from the first alignment camp, all the training sessions. Because we we definitely trying some new things and, and one or two guys in a team who doesn't know all the little things we're trying to do, sometimes uh, you know, that swing momentum in the game. Uh, Thomas also only joined us very late uh, because uh, um, he wasn't like Andre Pollard, Le Leicester fell out and Andre Pollard immediately joined us and he trained with us three weeks. Uh, I, this is his fourth week, so it's easy to put him in. Uh, Thomas, we're happy to have Thomas. We're happy to have Trevor also in the mix. Uh, yeah, and I think uh, uh, and Tux had a really good 10 minutes when he was on. Uh, it was tough to leave him out of the group. And then the same with Nedlin Fischer and Andre Hofenter, what uh, they brought, to, uh, not to the game specifically, but to the squad when they were on tour. Well, I see, um, obviously a lot of these Irish Hello, how are you doing? Lots of these Irish guys have spent a season with Jack in Ireland. Do you have any concerns they might have got a bit extra insight into how the box works? Yeah, no, definitely they will, uh, without a doubt. Um, but uh, Jack phones me every night and tells me everything about Ireland. No, I'm joking. joking. No, um, no, look, uh, rugby is a professional game, and um, certainly he, he will implement things there what worked for us here. Uh, some of them you can clearly see. Some, some of them are working. Uh, some of them are not working because players and countries and cultures are different. Um, and coaches are different when you're in different cultures and countries. I remember when I was in Munster, you're a bit out of your comfort zone and you don't always read body language. Uh, and when you said something, you're not quite sure that this guy get what I was trying to say, uh, say there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, Arches Neman played for Munster, you know, uh, he's our Leinster boy, you know. So, uh, so uh, yeah, what you can now, nowadays see on television, and if you follow teams on Twitter, they post all their drills and stuff on Twitter nowadays a lot, so you can see who's basically sometimes think who's starting, who's wearing the bib and who's not wearing the bib, and those kind of things. So, uh, well, one thing I pro promise you, uh, I will never put Jack in a position where uh, he has his people he's working with and team he loves currently, uh, which is Leinster. Um, I think he is in any way. 
help us for that. Um, I also trust him not to tell him like names of moves and calls and those kind of things. So I'm not worried about that. What, what have you seen? Sorry, just one more one. Have you seen much change in Ireland since the last time? Because obviously Johnny Sexton and Donna would be big deal. Have you seen much change? The ref got it much easier than half um, since <laughs> ten years ago. No, I'm joking. Um, uh, no, uh, uh, yes, Johnny. I always said when we played against Johnny, he's, he's so frustrated with us. But he, oh, we, we do be nice team to be in his team. And, uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess I want to say we have respect for him uh, uh, for how he plays, uh, how we could command games and, and command respect. Uh, you know, but this young fella, he's not scared. Uh, he plays it on the on the on the game line. You know, he goes for a cross kick if he wants to. He doesn't shy away from tackling. I'm not sure uh, if they put uh, um, uh, what's this small one for Manfred, Casey, Casey or, or or Mur with them. Uh, maybe Casey because Casey and him play together. Uh, so at that age. Uh, you don't feel the pressure of this match like you so much until you actually realize uh, what you're part of. And sometimes that's good. Uh, um, and what of change in the game? Um, I think they even defend a little bit Justin Albert style, a little bit. Um, uh, and they are off the line, without a doubt. Um, Ewan, can I ask you, um, as much experience playing as a squad, can I ask you, um, at some, it sounds like, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, Rassi wants the history to stay in the past, so what happened in the past against these two team nations to stay in the past. What is it about the Springboks versus this island side, and why is it that you guys have not managed to get one over this island side in the last three encounters? Yeah, well, um, I think they're obviously a world-class team. Uh, they, uh, they're good at their structures, uh, they know what they want out of a game. Um, and yeah, they, obviously the last few games haven't gone our way. Um, so yeah, we're, we're excited for this challenge, uh, two test matches in South Africa. Um, we obviously haven't, haven't played them in South Africa for the last eight years, so it's going to be a, a nice challenge to, to face them here in front of our own fans. I'm sure there will be a few thousands of Irish fans coming down as well. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a, a great test match. Can, should, should we read something into the fact that Rassi has brought his, so I don't the English word, the Grof is Nader for this test match, and so, uh, the series, then, or at least this test match? Yeah. Sorry, the what? Um, uh, he brought in the Grof the 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 big guns, the big guns. The big guns. There we go. What big, what big guns? The spring of big guns, like yourself and the rest of the squad. I feel. Well, every time pick. Yeah. Every time try and pick a best team that's available. Yeah, it's a funny question. Actually, it's actually a serious question. Should we, as the media, as the public, as the supporters, can we read something in there that? Rassi and his management team are serious that they should try and get one over Ireland at Loftus this weekend. Um, <laughs> we're playing Ireland. I think Rassi is going to always pick his best best squad. Uh, I think for the Wales game as well. Uh, I think we go out. I certainly go out, and everyone who's working on the field go out every test test match to to go and win. Doesn't matter if that's a a game against the Griffins or if it's a big test match or World Cup final. I think you put on the Springbok jersey. You always want to. Want to get a test victory? It goes down in history. That's what I call the history, and you want to um, be part of the better side of history. So, um, yeah, <laughs> don't think you can read anything into that. Uh, I think Ireland will also pick their best team. So, yeah. Uh, given uh, just talking about, uh, I know you relish the physical battle with the forwards and the whole team, but do, do you expect something new come Saturday uh, compared to what you ex what experienced the last time at the World Cup with the same opposition? Yeah, I think there's always. Uh, I mean, that, that's why coaches all get, get paid so much because they always have great plans and <laughs> come with new plans. So there will always, always be, be new plans that they'll bring to, um, to the game. Uh, so we definitely can't expect the same um, what they brought last time. They obviously, they've got a, a DNA, so, so do we. So um, there's always that 80% that will probably stay the same, but there's always that room for, for change and yeah, we, we must just, when you play test match, right, we expect anything. It's just on the money thing. <laughs> Ask him who sold this house to. Go tell them. Big coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was much um, said about the uh, um, chat you had with Jim. Um, 
to know Irish team after the group stage match. Do you, do you feel they would, they're going to target you more with regards to that? Or is that also just something that was over hyped to the media? Yeah, the, I would say the Irish media definitely targeted me after that, after that incident. Um, look, I, I said what I said and um, it was uh, off the game and um, I see a lot of them said uh, how, how I could count exactly to that certain amount. I mean, you just obviously give a give an estimate. It was definitely not uh, less than six or seven. It wasn't not more than than twenty of them. So, just gave gave an estimate and um, yeah. I mean, like I said, I say what I said. Like we'll never after a game uh, tell a team uh, we'll see we'll see in the final if, if if there's so many rugby still to be played. Um, maybe that was their way to. To say uh, they they think we're a good side and, and we might make it all the way through. I don't know, but yeah, people definitely interpreted it a, a, a bit wrong and took took it a bit out of context. Guys, just that one thing, what would you want your specialist? I mean, we go to Africa because we've got eight minutes left. I was going to ask you, does altitude matter this, this weekend uh, at Loftus? Because we saw on the Insta coming here, falling short, and but but then we saw Glasgow Warriors coming here and put one over the ball here. Ah, uh, it depends how fit you are. You know, it's that's why uh, if you if you're unfit. Which island won't be? Um, you know, they arrived uh, Friday, I think, or, or the more than nine, nine days here, ten days here. Um, yeah, it, it definitely affects, but all of us, uh, the guys who went down this weekend to Cape Town for two days, so they come back to altitude again uh, when they arrive here on, on, on Sunday evening. Uh, so um, yeah, it's 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 more of the kicking. It really has a big effect. Uh, it does change your your distance on how far you can you can pass the ball further, you can kick the ball further, you can kick it higher, uh, you can kick for touch further, uh, and you definitely run a little bit more. And and that together with the altitude, um, because the ball travels so far, and kicking game is quite something currently in in test test match rugby. But um, uh, knowing Ireland and coaches for two years, uh, they're very scientific, scientific around things like that and they will be doing their best that that does not affect them. Last English question from you, so and then I'll kick off. Um, Rasi, there's, there's a need to pick what is deemed to be the best team and there's also the need to look forward and as you, as you said in the past that 2027 is a long project. How do you balance that because as you rightly said that Ireland is a scene that needs to be watched. Um, Regardless of whatever you said around it, but you also need to also put in the early input for the for the next World Cup because how do you try to to, to balance that type of any, any given test match? Yeah, actually another one there that you must balance is trying to hold your job and not get fired <laughs> uh, 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 in between. Um, uh, look. If we get all the players to understand, and that's what we're trying to do with the, the, the squad we have and bringing players into experience, as I said to you last week, about Andre Yuko's experience and what Joseph's experience, what Tuk's experience, what Ivanov's experience, I think it's a much better way of bringing guys in and giving 14, 15 guys, and I'm repeating what I said last week, sorry, but uh, in 2020 we lost the whole year. We just didn't have this we didn't have this Wales Test match where four debutants played and one was man of the match. Uh, now he's comfortable in the Springbok setup. Now if Cheslin goes down or Kanan comes back, there's competition, more, more competition again. And now Tooks has played well uh, uh, when he came on for those 10 minutes. Now Gerrard is under pressure again. And when Kitsi comes back, then Kitsi must work his way back in. So um, it's, uh, for us, we've got a, a succession planning chart and you know we would love to get so many caps into different players and have targets for that but uh, um, momentum and the vibe and the feeling of, of the fans uh, sometimes um, overshadow uh, uh, and make you change things because you don't want um, the fans and the media start thinking that you, you're not well planned and then sometimes you just say, listen, we plan to, to give a few guys in this game a chance. We're not having great momentum now. Let's throw in the big 
the uh, uh, like like Fizzy said. So uh, hopefully that way. Okay, we've got five minutes for the talk.